Corn School is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Bernard Tobin here at the Farm Smart Expo, and uh, we're catching up with uh, Greg Butler. And Greg's going to tell us about, uh, why do we, how do I describe it, a water jet opener uh, on a corn planter. Hey, uh, Greg, welcome to Canada, all the way from Australia, right? Thanks, Bernard. Yeah, yeah, no, I got here last night, so really pleased to be here at the, uh, the Expo today. Awesome. So tell me about this technology, something that you've been working with in Australia. Again, why put a water jet technology on a corn planter or in, in any planter? I guess uh, a few years ago we looked at um, the ability for knife points and disc seeders and where their limitations were. And at least in our farming system, we had a whole lot of issues with penetration, uh, hair pinning, and with knife points, just the, uh, the whole management of stubble. And in particularly where we wanted to take our farming system, and this is probably a little bit different to the Canadian uh, farming system maybe, but I guess we're pretty keen to have a lot more residue on the ground. You know, the two really big drivers in our farming system are soil cover and time of sowing. Um, and I guess we didn't want to make a slightly better tine or a slightly better disc. We want to look outside the square and, and see what else other cutting technologies are out there that we could potentially use. And uh, we, we evaluated a, a bunch of them. We came across the, um, the water jet technology and uh, we had no till and zero till. So we thought we'd go at this thing called aqua till. And uh, it's really about taking an established technology, which is high pressure water jet cutting and redeploying it to ag. Mm. And I guess in the first instance, we want to see, was it in the ballpark? Was it in the ballpark for water rates? Was it in the ballpark for, for uh, horsepower? Would it actually cut the residue very well? And um, I guess when we first started, we didn't really know what we were doing. We had a whole lot of issues. But over the last few years, we've been able to hone that down. And we think uh, it's got a lot of potential in the system to really enable the next level of, of farming system that we want to do. And that comes down to being able to have lots of residue in the system, so whether that residue is wet or dry, um, be able to do things like weed seed capture where residue is cut lower. And so inherently, you're going to have residue on the ground if you want to do weed seed capture. So there was a bunch of reasons. We also want to see more predators like birds of prey be able to get in and get mice and they can't do that in standing stubble. So um, yeah, it was really about seeing whether we could uh, you know, develop a whole new farming system that could uh, you know, deliver those goods and we think it can. So tell us how it works. How do you apply, I mean, some technology that you're working uh, with uh, iCubed. Now they're uh, you know, a, a high precision robot integrator. How did you guys come together and how do you put that technology on this planet? Yeah, so uh, Jeff Martell, who now works for iCubed, used to work for Flow International, who actually makes the high pressure pump. When we did our review of cutting technologies and what we could potentially use as a liquid coulter, um, we reached out to, to Flo and, uh, and I met up with Jeff and we did some control cutting. And uh, I guess uh, since then we've just been evolving it and improving it. Um, I guess we don't try to have any limitations on the technology. I mean, often it's easy to think, oh, that's not going to work for this reason or that's not going to work for that reason. So Greg, tell me how this works. There's some cr incredible footage here of this awesome trench that's been cut. So in effect, we have a liquid. Now that can be water, but we've also used a lot of UAN as an aqueous solution. So it can be a fertilizer solution as well. In effect, that goes into the pump and is uh, pressurized up to about 50,000 PSI. Um, that's about 3,800 bar. And it comes through a, uh, a dualed orifice. So that's like a, a nozzle effectively. It's about uh, between seven one thousandths of an inch to ten one thousandths of an inch, depending on how much you want to cut. And uh, that pressure is turned into velocity. So at the point where the liquid's actually coming out of the nozzle, it's coming out at uh, several times the speed of sound. And um, yeah, it, it basically just slices through the residue. The, what I like about it, I guess, is the technology itself in terms of making that pressure is off the shelf technology from you know, 30 years old. We don't have to reinvent that. Mm. It's really about the ground engagement tools and, uh, and getting that, uh, that cutting right. Um, we've spent a fair bit of time trying to increase the efficacy of the tool. So when we first started cutting, we weren't getting great results. But since then, we've, uh, we've been out of probably three times the cutting power for, for the same size nozzle. So yeah, we've uh, been able to progress that. It's important that we uh, hold the residue and uh, that we put some compression in it. It doesn't have a lot of um, air spaces in it. We've also done a lot of uh, water with moist residue versus dry residue, and it seems to cut wet residue better, which is unlike any other mechanical device or quarter that we've, we've ever seen. Couple of quick questions. Um, what crops could this do? Do you uh, sort of project this over a lot of crops? 
Absolutely. Um, not necessarily vegetable crops, but maybe. But certainly we're doing a lot of work in grains, all the various grains, oil seeds and legumes in Australia. We're also doing a lot of work in cotton and sugarcane. Sugarcane is a big issue in Australia with the Great Barrier Reef and stuff. And, and up there, we're cutting through about 22 tonnes of, of leaf material, of residue. And uh, again, it's all about just being able to get seed soil contact. How can we cut that residue without the downforce that causes hair pinning? So anywhere where people want to improve their soil health by having permanent residue cover and are looking to access seed to soil contact and having problems with it balling up or raking up or hair pinning or whatever else, any farming system that has that, potentially uh, the aquatil system is, is uh, a potential tool. I would say, however, that um, row spacing is a, is a key factor. And uh, obviously wide row crops use a lot less liquid than narrow row crops does. So things that are on really, really tight rows are gonna be more problematic than things that are on wider rows. So in the first instance, we'll probably start with crops that are around the 15 inch row spacing and uh, really try to perfect it from there. What about cost and commercialization? Well, you had a lot of questions about um, the cost of a row unit here. Pretty, everybody was pretty excited about the number. And uh, what about uh, commercial launch? Yeah, so in terms of cost, I guess, uh, you know, we're not a commercial organisation and there's a whole lot of different things that go into cost as well, but certainly we think the cost is in the ballpark. And in terms of commercialisation, we, we have a few strategies. One is the retrofit kit strategy, where someone who's got an existing cedar and doesn't necessarily want to buy another cedar but has a whole lot of issues with residue management, they could just fit that out and, uh, you know, put the Aquatil system onto an existing cedar. The other strategy that we're working with is working with uh, cedar manufacturers and uh, we're working um, with a company called NDF in Australia and they are hoping to bring out their first Aquatil enabled disc cedar next year. So I think that'll be a watershed. I think at the end of the day, talking conceptually to seeding manufacturers is one thing, having one of their competitors bring something to market and get benefit from that and a competitive advantage will uh, hopefully accelerate that. We've got a bit to still work out with the system, um, but I would expect the first lot of commercialization to happen in Australia next year. I think retrofit kits in Canada could probably start next year. Um, so yeah, we're, we're really not too far away from it. Well, Greg, hey, thanks for uh, dropping by, making a long trip to tell us all about this. Uh, we look forward to uh, a launch and uh, we'll see you again. No, absolute pleasure, thank you.